About two years ago, I was working as a Peace Corps volunteer in a small rural Central American village. And one day while I was out hiking on this small mountain and walking by an old farmhouse, I noticed a little orange puppy which was just lying motionless on the ground and I thought it might be hurt or something so I walked up only to discover that the puppy was in fact very sick. It was massively bloated especially in its abdomen but even in its legs and neck and it was missing a lot of fur, had a bunch of sores and it was covered in what was hundreds and hundreds of ticks. I kneeled down and gently touched her head and she looked up at me and faintly wagged her tail. And there was just something about that moment when she looked up at me and wagged her tail that made me feel like she really wanted to live. I don't know what it was but I just felt something really deep inside and just got the sense that this dog really uh, wanted me to help her even though it, it looked like a pretty desperate case. So I ended up putting her in a cardboard box and hiked her back down uh, the mountain about two hours to a road where I caught a bus into the city to see a vet. The vet trip revealed that she was sick with what's called Ehrlichia, which is a deadly tick-borne disease. The vet said that she likely wouldn't make it and that there was a lot of severe fluid buildup everywhere in her body. But I still decided to try, started giving her medicine, and uh, named her Timmy. She did almost die the first week because the fluid began building up around her lungs and she began uh, having really bad hyperventilation and asphyxia attacks one night. And I have no phone service, no Wi-Fi, and there's definitely no emergency vet clinics around where I was living. So all I could really do that night was hold her chest and her head up uh, all night while she just sort of passed in and out of consciousness and had these sort of asphyxia attacks, coughing and then wheezing, barely able to breathe. And I just held her there and prayed that she would pull through. And she actually did. And uh, I was able to bring her back to the vet the next morning and we gave her some uh, more medication, which helped with the fluid. And after that, she just went uphill. Everything just got better and better over time. She never, never stopped fighting and just kept getting better and better. Timmy, sit. Sit. Good. Timmy also became incredibly playful very quickly. Um, she loved to fetch and she was incredibly energetic and full of life despite being so sick. Uh, she was also uh, very people and animal friendly and after a good month of having her I even began toying with the idea of maybe finding her a sibling. One day when me and Timmy were out on a hike we came across a litter of malnourished and sickly puppies uh, out by another farm. I actually had some puppy food as well as some war medication on me that day and so I decided to stop and give the famished puppy some food and examine them for ticks and fleas. While I was doing this, uh, one of the puppies actually walked over and curled up on my backpack and refused to get off when I tried to leave. As I looked at him, it really hit me that he was the most undernourished looking one of the bunch and I ended up deciding to try and rescue him. He was really just skin and bones. I didn't even know how he had enough strength to stand up and walk. At my home, he threw up tons and tons of worms, so I quickly gave him a parasite treatment before taking him to the vet. He wasn't sick, aside from the many worms, but was deathly anemic, and so undernourished he was the size of an eight-week-old puppy at already five months of age, according to the vet who looked at his teeth. I gave him the name uh, Buddy. He refused to eat anything at all, and so I had to hand feed him for almost three weeks until he was able to finally eat again on his own. It took him a pretty long time to recover, but he made progress every day. And to be honest, now eating is his favorite thing. He loves to eat. He's also very strong, very energetic, loves to play, and he's made an incredible recovery. Hey, hey, how did you, how 
Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Hi, Jimmy. A couple days after I found Buddy, I also stumbled upon another puppy who was abandoned by the side of a bigger road. She was all alone and it was storming out and I could hear her crying from almost a block away. And after debating about it, I ended up taking her back home with me. She got the name Jay. At first glance, she seemed extremely healthy. She was a big puppy, healthy, no bones showing, nothing. But as the days went by, I began noticing that she was much more scared and hesitant towards people than Timmy or Buddy. She would get very scared whenever anyone walked by my house. She also refused to eat anything at all, no matter what I tried to give her. And she also suffered from urinary incontinence, often uh, urinating on herself while in the middle of eating or while fast asleep even. A service dog trainer friend of mine told me that she appeared to have anxiety and possibly uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Jay! See, this is Jay. She won't come up to me like the other two. Buddy! Hi, buddy! Hi, buddy! Jay, come here! Jay! Jay, come! Jay! Hi, Jay! Hi, Jay! Hi! Buddy! <laughs> Jimmy! Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Jay did great with Timmy and Buddy right from the start, and it really seemed like having the two of them around was helping her anxiety considerably. She got better and better over time, and while still a little bit more nervous than her siblings, she's pretty much entirely recovered. There were constantly stray or abandoned puppies and sometimes kittens around the rural areas I worked at, and throughout my term there, I ended up rescuing over 50 puppies and kittens which I generally fostered for a bit while trying to find them potential owners. They were almost always sick and malnourished, so I would often have to give them medical treatments as well, and just make sure that they were really healthy before handing them off to someone. I got into the habit of always carrying some puppy food and especially chicken flea treatments with me on hikes, which I'd often give sick or abandoned puppies I'd crumb across. And these were often puppies that I would bring back home with me, take care of for a few days, and then give to people. Sometimes I'd have up to six or seven puppies running around my house at one time. I also educated people on proper puppy nutrition and basic flea tick worm prevention, as well as worked with a local nonprofit to hold very low cost spay neutering pop up clinics in some of these rural communities that were near me. Buddy, yep, Jay, and then Timmy, yep. Buddy is always the first one out. Hi, hi, oh my goodness, hi, Buddy. Hi, Timmy, 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 Buddy, calm down. Hi, Jay. Timmy, Buddy, and Jay always loved the company, and I think growing up with a lot of foster puppies made them very sociable to other dogs. And of course, they're all doing amazing nowadays. Uh, people who, when I first rescued Timmy and Buddy, would tell me that these dogs were ugly, sick, and they would never survive even a week, now actually try to offer me money to buy them. <laughs> they are still inseparable, even as adults. They still have to play together, and they still sleep together. I'm honestly so glad that I found them, and that we created this unlikely big, happy family between us. <laughs>